Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Seguin. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player. I've been vegan for nine years. I've also been able to coach over 350 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to listen to today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, we're going to go over how to eat more as a vegan and lose fat, right? Because this is a big question that I get often is like, how can you help your members eat more food? And how can they say that they're always stuffed and never hungry when they're in their fat loss phase? If you listen to many of our Fit Vegan Success Story podcast episode with our members, their number one quote unquote complaint is that they have to eat too much food in order for them to lose weight, especially the first meal plan tends to be the big shocker for most people. And so today I want to show you, first of all, how that's possible. Second, why that's possible. And third, that it's not actually what you think it is. And I'll share with you the secrets of how we're actually able to help our members eat more food. All right. So I made some notes here um, just to make sure that I actually don't miss anything and I'm able to uh, properly explain all this. Right. So number one, is the expectation of how many calories we actually really burn, right? So we all think that we all would like to be able to eat, like for the ladies, 2,500 calories, for example, for the men, you know, 3,500 calories, 4,000 calories because we work out and because we're active and because we have some muscle, we think that we get to eat that much more. But in reality, we as humans don't really burn that much calories on a day-to-day basis. So just to give you a little example, we were training... Um, um, uh, uh, Brandon, who was an ex professional basketball player and he was, oh man, how tall was he? He was six foot 11 and he was like 312 pounds, I believe. And his theoretical maintenance was 4,000 calories. Right. And I, I just say this to put it in perspective because like I'm six foot four, 185 pounds. And I, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I can eat 4,000 calories per day. Like that's what I need to eat to maintain. But in reality, my, my food intake probably could have been like, you know, 2,500 calories and not 4,000. So just to put in perspective, someone that is six foot 11, almost seven feet tall, maybe he was seven feet tall. It was pretty tall, 300 plus pounds has eat 4,000 calories to maintain his body weight. And so for most men who are like, you know what, probably under slightly under six foot, that weigh like 150 to 180 pounds, there's no way for you to eat 4,000 plus calories in order to maintain your weight unless you have just an absurd amount of muscle mass, like a really big bodybuilder. And for the ladies, right, I understand that you would like to be able to eat more, but you know, for some of our members, their theoretical maintenance goes from 1,700 to the highest we've seen is 2,700 calories but it very much depends on your metabolism and uh, how tall and how much you, how much you actually weigh, right? The more you weigh, the more calories you need to intake when it's good weight, right? Like quality muscle, not fat that you have on. So just, you know, manage your expectation of how many calories you actually think you get to eat. If you go, I believe the website is T D E E total daily energy expenditure.com. You can enter your height, your age, sex, level of activity, everything, and it'll pump you out a theoretical number and it gives you a ballpark of how much you should be eating to maintain your current weight with your current level of exercise. You'll see it's not as high as you think it would be, right? And so that's the part number one. The part number two is, okay, now that we know that our calorie intake can't be as high as we wish for it to be, second is how do we maximize those calories, right? So calories versus volume. So that that's the key here. When our members say that they're stuffed and they're eating so much food, it doesn't mean that we're making them eat 3000 calories, 4000 calories. What it means is that we are maximizing the amount of volume for the amount of calories that they get to eat on a day to day basis. That's simply what we're saying. You know, you can eat, for example, 2000 calories, which just tends to be like the, the theoretical average for a lot of women, 2000 calories per day. If you have a Starbucks breakfast with a drink at Starbucks and then for lunch, you go out to like Subway um, and then for dinner, you just come home and you make something yourself like a not even something, but you just you order food or you order takeout or whatever it may be. All of that may put you well over 2000 calories, first of all. Second, the amount of, of oil that would cause inflammation in the body, the sodium 
the, the fact that it's processed would not be healthy for it. But I'm just saying is if you just eat at Starbucks, eat like a sandwich at Subway, which you think is healthy. And then for dinner, you come home and you make something that would put you well over 2000 calories, right? Because a lot of the processed foods are really high in fat. And for our members, if we give one of our members 2000 calories, when they first start off, I would say 99.9% .9 of them, as much as they tell me that they're foodies, can't eat the full amount of food because it's two, 2,000 calories of whole food plant-based is the world of a difference, right? You can eat one cookie at Subway or I can have you have a massive freaking salad or maybe like three, four cups of strawberries to have the same amount of calories, right? What would you rather have, like four cups of, of fresh strawberries or a cookie? Which one do you think is going to be more filling to you, right? The four cups of strawberries. And so it's all about making these smart food choices. And that's all you've probably heard before that when you go vegan, you don't have to track your calories, right? You can just eat until you're full because if you're eating the right types of food, you're going to feel satiated on a lower amount of calories. Now, I have my thoughts about that. We'll dive a little bit um, deeper into this podcast after, but I just want you to realize that the calorie density of the food that you're eating is what will make a difference on whether you feel full or not, on whether it feels like a lot of food or not. So a 2,000 calorie of the typical Western diet versus 2,000 calories that I would give one of my members on a whole food plant-based diet, 2,000 calories Western diet, 100%, they can eat the food, right? In a, in a heartbeat, and they're still going to be hungry after. They're going to go to bed and be like, I, I was kind of hungry today. But if I give them a 2,000 calorie meal plan that is 100% whole food plant-based, there's no way that they can finish it. We've had a ton of members are like, you don't understand, I am a real foodie. And then they get their first meal plan and they're like, I can't eat all of this. This is too much. I don't understand. I'm going to lose weight on this. And then they eat it and then they lose weight, right? So the volume of the food that you're eating makes the world of a difference, right? Cookie versus four to five, potentially five cups of strawberries, all right? The, vo the volume and the food choices makes the world of a difference. So that is how our members get to eat more. That is what I mean by eating more to lose fat. Right. If you look, you put the food on the table of a typical Western diet or even a, a junk food vegan or a vegan that's eating a lot of processed meats and processed foods on the table. And then I put the food from our fit vegan whole food plant based meal plan. Our food will have three to four times the volume than the typical diet of the normal person. Right. Simply because we focus on volume. So they physically get to eat more food, which is psychologically an amazing thing when you're trying to lose fat. And then um, second, you feel so satiated because there's obviously richer in fiber. There's more vitamins and nutrients. So those nutrient receptors in your gut feel a lot better. You're also helping optimize your gut microbiome. You have to chew the food uh, longer because, again, it's so rich in fiber. It's so it's so much easier to like eat a cookie than to eat 200 calories of vegetables. Like you have to chew, 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 and it gives your body the time to realize like, hey, you're eating food right now. We feel full. You can stop eating, All right? So calorie versus volume makes the world of a difference. Now, let's dive into if you go vegan, you don't need to track your food, which is a complete fallacy. You do need to track your food, and here's why. If you're actually eating properly vegan, 100% whole food plant-based, right? Yes, you get to eat a ton of food volume wise. Yes, you will feel satiated. Yes, you can eat pretty much all the vegetables and the fruits and the grains that you want. Here's the issue though, because it is so low in calories, so high in volume, so rich in fi fiber and so satiating, there's a high, higher likelihood of you under eating on your calories, right? Which, you know, we've seen through scientific data that it is not beneficial for the body and not healthy for you to be in a massive calorie deficit for a long period of time. If you're in a low calorie deficit, meaning there's not enough energy coming in for what you're doing on a day to day basis, what do you think is going to happen? Right? You're going to feel low energy. You're going to feel tired. It's going to start to affect your sleep. It's going to start to affect your sex drive. It's going to start to affect your thinking. And then on top of that, because your body's only job is to survive, it's going to be like, okay, we're expending all this energy on a day to day basis but there's only this little coming in. So if we continue at this rate of burning calories per day, we won't live for a long time. And so what the body does, it starts to slow down the metabolism so it can learn to basically optimize and, and, and function on a lower amount of calories, which is when that happens, a slower metabolism. You have a slower metabolism, then you, ha you have to eat less and less and less in order to feel full and feel satiated, which we don't want. We want a raging metabolism, right? So a, a, what you want is uh, a slow metabolism is basically like a Prius, 
right? You can go really far on a small amount of gas. What you want as a metabolism is not a Prius. You want a Hummer. You just want to burn through fuel. That's what you want. That's what's going to allow you to eat a lot of food and feel freaking amazing on a day-to-day basis and keep you healthy. You want your metabolism to be like a Hummer, not a Hummer in real life. You'd be broke right now because of the price of gas, right? (laughs) You want a Hummer as a metabolism. You don't want a Prius. You, the only time you want a Prius in the, in the realm of physical fitness is if you're training for something like an Ironman or a marathon. You want to become efficient on the amount of fuel that you have to be able to run longer and faster. But most of you are not looking to train for this stuff, right? You just want to be healthy. You want to have a better body composition. So you want a Hummer as a metabolism, not a Prius. So if you're eating 100% whole food plant-based, I do recommend that you track because if you're actually doing it properly and you stop when you're satiated and you're eating whole food plant-based 100% of the time, you're not going to eat enough calories. There's a high likelihood that you will be under eating. Now on the flip side, if you're including some more of these vegan processed foods on a day-to-day basis, there's a high likelihood that you think that you're eating the right amount of calories, but you're actually overeating calories add up quickly, right? I don't know for you guys, but a, an average cookie, I'll just use cookie as an example. It's 200 calories, right? An average cookie. Can you easily eat five cookies? Like I don't know for you, I can easily sit down with a, with a glass of unsweet almond milk and just like eat five cookies. I would have no issues. And bam, right there, a thousand calorie goes by, right? When a thousand calories can be two really massive Buddha bowls that would probably keep me satiated for eight, up to eight hours. I eat those five cookies. First of all, I probably won't feel great after. I'll probably be hungry a few hours after, right? Because there's no, there's no nutrition in those cookies. So if you're eating a mixture of whole food plant-based with some processed foods, you still have to track because there's a high likelihood that you will go over your calories. And again, we all know there's three different scenarios. You eat over your calories, meaning there's more energy coming in for what's going out. Your body is going to store it for the future, right? For future when it needs that energy. It's not about storing fat. It's about storing the energy source for the future. If you're eating the same amount of calories that you're expending per day, you're going to maintain your weight, right? There's a perfect balance there. If you're under eating, meaning there's less energy coming in and what's actually going out, your body is going to want to slow down its metabolism to compensate and be able to perform at a lower amount of calories. So regardless of the two scenarios, if you're eating 100% whole food plant-based, you have a high likelihood of under eating. And if you are eating some more of these processed food, there's a high likelihood of you overeating, going over calories and putting on some weight. So you do need to track your food to a certain extent. Now I'm going to go over how to do that in a very efficient and smart way where you don't have to be on MyFitnessPal or Chronometer all the time. But I just want to add a third component to that. If you want to improve your body composition, you want a healthy body, you need to get enough protein in your diet in your day to day, right? The the science shows 1.2 gram to 2 gram per kg of body weight is all you need. You do not need to do a gram per pound of body weight, which is the old bodybuilding weight and the Arnold way to do it. That is not relevant. A lot of those people were on anabolic steroid, which enhances your protein synthesis so they could eat more and actually absorb it. If you eat too much of it, your body is just going to pee it out, right? It's just expensive food or supplements at that point. So 1.2 gram to 2 gram per kg of body weight is how much you actually need to eat in order to fuel and get enough amino acids for you to build and retain lean tissue muscle mass um, if you're trying to improve your body composition and you are strength training. Now, the last part, let's go into you having to track your nutrition. There's multiple ways, right? We're all familiar with MyFitnessPal or Chronometer. I personally use MyFitnessPal. I track my food every day because I'm reverse dieting right now. But here's the thing. I've been doing it for over, oh man, how long has it been? Over 17 years at this point, right? I've worked on my relationship with food. I have an amazing relationship with food. There's no, if I want something, I eat it. I make it fit. Like I have no issues with it. So that's the number one thing I like to say. Second, it literally takes me, Uh, less than, I was trying to think between three and four minutes. It literally takes me less than five minutes per day to track all of my food because I have a good ballpark idea of what I can eat in a day to kind of get to the number that I'm supposed to. So for me, I just go at the end of the day, I input everything, takes me less than five minutes and then I'm done for the day, right? So the other part is if you don't want to track your food, um, actually, let me add this. I don't use a scale to weigh my food. I just eyeball everything. That's a big part of having a good relationship with food. A cup of rice is a cup of rice. It's not 45 grams or however many grams it is. It's a cup is a freaking cup, right? I don't care if there's spaces. If you're measuring a cup of strawberry, I don't care if there's spaces between the strawberries. Just don't, don't crack your head on that. Just keep it simple. A cup is a cup. Don't weigh it, right? I don't weigh any of my food. So that's a big part. 
if you want to track your food without tracking your food, get a meal plan right if there if you have a coach right if you're working with us we give you a fit vegan meal plan that is 100 whole food plant-based that is tailored to all your macronutrients and micronutrient needs if you want to build your own just make a list of the amount of meals that you eat per day right breakfast lunch smoothie and dinner for example and then grab recipes that you like to eat that you enjoy and then make yourself a meal plan all right so if i have one cup of oats every morning with three quarter cups of blueberries and a tablespoon of almond butter that's how many calories all right then build your lunch and build your smoothie then build your dinner and make sure that everything adds up every day right make sure that everything adds up for that one day to hit the amount of calories and protein that you're supposed to need to to, to eat and then just repeat the same thing every day all right the only thing i would recommend that you do if you are going to follow that structure um, is to not eat the same types of fruits and vegetables and grains every day if you have a cup of rice you know a cup of quinoa will be pretty darn close in calories right if you have a banana, you know, probably have like two apples or like two cups of strawberries, for example. Make sure to alternate between your fruits and vegetables and your grains and your sources of protein. You do not want to eat the same thing every single day. When I did my podcast with Simon Hill and I'm, um, you know, working on potentially getting an, uh, an interview with uh, Dr. B um, from Fiber Fuel, you need diversity in your plants and the plants that you are eating. You need diversity and so you can't be eating just bananas for breakfast every day and always eating the same types of food you're not building those gut that gut microbiome that we able to handle everything all right so guys that is how you eat more food as a vegan and lose fat you focus on volume right everything else was, we talked about was to set the stage for this but it's not about if you focus on calorie dense foods you're going to be hungry. It's not going to visually look like a lot. You need to focus on foods that are really high in volume. I bulk up all my meals with vegetables. I tell all of my members, hey, add as many vegetables as you want to to your dish, right? Bulk it up, throw the volume. You can make a wrap with some grilled barbecue tempeh, right? You have a wrap, grilled barbecue tempeh, tomato and lettuce, right? And a little bit of um, whatever sauce you want. And it'll be like a tiny wrap or... You can throw in some a ton of spinach, more lettuce, some onions, some mushrooms, some bell peppers, some tomatoes, and you just double and triple the size of your wrap. Which one do you think is going to be more filling from a psychological standpoint and just from a physical standpoint? The one that you bulked up with vegetables. So don't be afraid to bulk up your meal with vegetables. Listen to your mom. Your mom told you to eat your vegetables, right? I just got to say, I love this meme where... Um, you know, it's the, the, the mom tells the kid like, Hey, eat all your vegetable. And then the kid goes vegan. The mom goes like, no, no, not like that. <laughs> right. So listen to your mom, eat your vegetables, bulk up your meals with, with vegetables. That's how you're going to be able to eat more in terms of volume and be able to lose fat. Right. So now I do want to address the calorie side because some of you guys have been following me for a long time and are aware of a thing called reverse dieting is where we speed up your metabolism post fat loss in order to allow you to eat a ton of food to maintain your new body weight, right? So that is a great principle as well. And you do want to keep the aspect of focusing on high volume foods. But what we do post transformation is we slowly and methodically re-increase your food on a week to week basis as your body is adjusting to the increase in food. And we're able to go from, you know, we've had some member and they cut 1,500 calories and then we ended the reverse diet at, th at 2,500 calories. So we're able to add 1,000 calories to their daily food intake and then they maintain their 40 pound fat loss, right? That's what reverse dieting does. But the, throughout the whole way, you focus on high volume foods to make sure that you're satiated and you feel awesome, right? So guys, I hope that this podcast was educational for you. Right? I'm tired of hearing people say that they're starving in their fat loss. Right? If you do it right, you don't have to. And if you're at the end, end, end of your cut for a few weeks, like, yeah, hunger is going to creep in a little bit. There's nothing wrong with hunger. Right? In the society that we live in, we think that, hungry, that being hungry is a bad thing. That's why the majority of society is, is overweight. Right? It's okay to be hungry from time to time. It's fine. You're going to survive. Right? Bulk up your meals with vegetables. So, on the, but for the most part of your transformation, you shouldn't really be hungry if you're eating properly. And so I just want to share this for those of you that are listening, um, that are members of the Fiving Tribe. Keep up the awesome work. For those of you that aren't but are potentially interested, there's a link in the show notes down below. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll just be in the description box. You can apply to work with us, right? We just want to have a conversation with you to see like, hey, where you're at, what are your goals, what are habits that you have, 
what would need to be changed, what needs to be adjusted, and how can we help you map out your very own Fit Vegan Blueprint so that you can reach your goal, reverse diet, meaning speed up your metabolism post fat loss so you never have to worry about putting the weight back on after again. Because I know that in this society, we don't have a fat loss issue, we have a keeping the weight off problem. And reverse dieting is what solves that. That's why we had so many members do that and have succeeded with their transformation. And so if you want more information, there's a link down below where you can uh, go on there, get more details. And if interested, you can apply for coaching. We do have a few spots available. And for those of you that are just listening to the podcast, massive thank you for all the love and support. I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next episode. Ciao.